Hello, hello, and welcome to the Yogi's podcast. Yes, the Yogi's podcast, not a special episode. Today, we are going to be talking about stress, which is one of the topics that people on Instagram said they want us to chat about. And with me today, I've got Ollie, Manny, Hi. Gabes, Hello. and of course, myself, Nick. So we're going to start off with some quick fire questions, a little bit different today. So first of all, Ollie. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how stressed do you feel right now? <laughs> Probably about an eight. <laughs> Why? Because I was 20 minutes late to <laughs> filming the pod. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just hate letting people down. And I, I know you're all gracious enough to say that I haven't let you down, but I feel it. You, know. you was in traffic. Well, yeah, well, it was the traffic's fault, obviously. But the, you And know, traffic is one thing that drives off the stress level. That's yeah. true. I think it's more the fact that I was just like sitting there just thinking there's nothing I can do other than get out and sprint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Driving even more stress probably. An eight out of ten. Uh Manny? Um probably three. Came in early. Had a ginger shot. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Gabe's? Four. Nice. I feel I feel all right. Nick? Yeah. I've had a bit of a stressful day, stressful morning, so I'd say about a six. Um, Work-related stresses. So now we're going to move on to word association. So I'm going to give you a question, a little statement, and then I need one word answers from you. Okay. Yeah, is that clear? All right, who wants to go first with the first one? Manny Geese. What's the one word you'd associate with stress? Mental. Ollie? Mindset. Gabe's? Tired. Manny? Yes, Nick. Actually, we'll start with someone else this time. Please do. <laughs> the one word that comes to your mind, the opposite of stress. Content. Manny? Mindfulness. Calm. Or quite similar. And yourself? Quick fire, not for me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but a, com a combination of those three, I'd say. <laughs> a <combi> He's fuming. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Combination of those three is, is pretty good. Uh, all right, last one for word association. I'm going to give you three words, Max, here, okay? Ollie. Yeah. Most stressful thing in the world? Um, not being myself. Good. <laughs> Manny? Being stuck in traffic. <laughs> I once left my car on the sidewood in the motorway because the traffic was just crazy. And I came back for like later on in the evening because I can't deal with traffic. Nowhere to escape on the motorway. <laughs> More than three words, but yeah, good to hear it. Yeah, Gabe's most stressful thing in the world: not having any control. Nice. Yeah, that's good word association. I think it like makes you really think. But I think I think on that one you should give us yours, because that was a, that was a good question that one day. Nah, sorry, can't, don't do quick fire. <laughs> Just immune. You don't want to give in. <laughs> well, we've got two more quick fire, but this is not word association. Okay. All right, Gabe's. How would you explain stress to a five-year-old? Um. Like, imagine, to a five-year-old, say, imagine a really heavy weight on your back mm. that you just can't get off. You can't shake, you can't push it off. It's just stuck there. It's weighing you down. That's probably how I'd describe it. Nice. Ollie? <laughs> Manny pointed Stress. at you. <laughs> <laughs> Stress to a five-year-old. Um, probably... Um, it's something that happens when you feel threatened or uncomfortable with something 
and it's a emotional response that you don't you have no control over it you don't choose to be stressed it's like a reaction or a response to something that happens to you when you're uh, yeah threatened or something bad's going to happen or something changes you know when you're uncomfortable something like that he just said everything but yeah <laughs> is a 5 year old getting that yeah 5 year olds probably well they're quite smart these days these 5 years old so i'm going to go with a killer one i'm going to be like stress is something psychological and physiological what psychological mean um i'm a 5 year old man <laughs> It's more about your mental space, your thinking, your well-being, and um, physiological is more about your physical being. And when you get into a problem, like if you fancied a girl in the playground, and you wasn't getting your, you know, getting the response you wanted, you might get stressed with by that. But it's how you deal with it that matters. I don't know. It's a hard one. It is a hard one, yeah. Yeah. Last quick fire question. Ollie. Yeah. When can stress be a good thing? Oh, um, when you're doing something that's uncomfortable, but you know afterwards you'll feel good. So, like, going to give a presentation in front of a bunch of people, or, I don't know, for me, this is quite stressful. So. Mm the ability to come outside my comfort zone. I'm in London, which I don't live in London, so being in London is a little bit uncomfortable for me, but it's stressful getting here, but when I'm here, I feel great. Mm. So mm. fighting through that. Gabe? Stress can definitely be a good thing to p make you push your limits. Mm. That could be physically, but also mentally or professionally. I think work stress can be a good thing. Mm. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to have a deadline that you have to hit sometimes. That can be stressful, but I often find that I can float around at work a bit until someone's like, I need this done by this time. And guess what? I'll get it done. Mm. So I think that can be quite good. Many geeks. But um, <clears throat> there's, there's different type of stresses, right? There's, I think there's three to four type of different type of stress. So it depends what stress you you're using or converting or <coughs> using it as a positive thing. I think there's acute, episodic, and um, the last one is, um, <coughs> oh gosh, come on guys. Don't get stressed out thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chronic, yeah, there's chronic, chronic stress, yeah. yeah. So it, it depends on what kind of stress we're talking about. Uh, if, we're all talking, if we're talking about acute stress, which relates to like short period of, you know, situation that you can handle compared to chronic, which is like, you know, it's like mm. forever. Long term, yeah. But um, I would say it depends on what kind of stress we're talking about mm. in converting to positive energy. So yeah. that question is, yeah. Just laying it out, letting you know there's different type of stresses. Yeah. yeah. And when it's an acute stress, for example, it can be good. Yeah. What? So an acute is probably one you could probably convert because it's it's more like you know in sh like short term like in periods, um, and you can use that to motivate yourself, you know how you want you know depending on how you feel. Again, it depends on the indi on the individual. For myself, I normally use stress to measure my I don't know I don't know how to say this, but when I go train, if I'm stressful. When I go training, I find that like I do more when I'm stressful when I go training because mm. I'm stressed out. So I I need to max, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And is training? Would you say training is <clears throat> one of the most important tools you have to manage stress? Yeah, because um, you have physical fitness and you have mental fitness, and it goes hand in hand. So um, when you're training, normally it starts from mental, then it goes physical. So Training is definitely a good way to overcome or manage a stressful situation that you might be in. I mean, that's why people go gym, go yoga, whatever it is. Mm. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think stress is it's it's like with a lot of these things. Sometimes, because I hear what everyone's saying about the benefits of stress, and I do think when you control the stress and help push yourself through it, the benefits that you get from it can be really powerful. 
but also to your point as well, sometimes when you're in that stressful situation, depending on how stressful it is, mm -hmm. it's hard to like become aware of it because mm -hmm. you've got all this like fighting noise in your head, don't you? Where where you where you know and and even if someone's like, don't worry about being so stressed, but you can't when you're in that zone sometimes. It's so hard to take a step back and, and say, oh, I'm really stressed now. I need to transfer this into good energy. I think it depends. And then there's, I think there's also things, you know, there's things that we all do, whether it be physical fitness or, or yoga. Or, I mean, a lot of breath work in yoga is about bringing stress to the system so that you can handle stressful situations better yeah. in life. And so I think it's, it's like you've got to try and work out. I mean, there's, you can push yourself through stress on purpose. And mm -hmm. I think there's time where life circumstances, you know, push you to a place where you do get stressed out. And there's kind of sometimes it's hard to have that awareness of I'm stressed out now. Um, were you about to ask something? No, no, just listen to what you're saying. Again, it all depends on the level of stress that person's in. Yeah. That, so that determines how you're going to deal with it. You know, like I said, there's various type of stress levels. Mm. Yeah. So. Because it is it is really important because, like you were saying, when you are chronically stressed, it has a physical, like we were saying, the mental and uh, physical when it comes to fitness. It's yeah. the same with stress as well. Yeah. First of all, it's like a physical reaction within your body. Mm -hmm. you know, the body lets off cortisone and adrenaline. the body can deal it, and adrenaline as well, and it can, but cortisone is a stress cortisone, hormone. Yeah. When you're stressed, you, l you release so much adrenaline, um, which is s similar to like, um, the uh, feeling that you'd feel like that you get before running into like a UFC match or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a similar kind of response um, that your body. That's to give your body the energy. Yeah, because your body goes into fight or flight with, mm. with yeah. stress. So, so the like sh the stress hormone that gets released <coughs> is cortisone. Yeah, and that's the one that has that can have massive detrimental impacts on your health when yeah. you get like cancer. A lot of a lot of these modern diseases. Are come from stress and come from the release of cortisone Absolutely. in our yes. bodies, and it's it is. And what is mad is that I feel that people know that, but they don't really know that, and that's why we do get. That's why we are kind of like a little bit caught up in the society that we live in, mm -hmm. where it is a stressful society. I think there's no denying that we live in a stressful society. I Look mean, at how we use our phones. I mean, there's, there's a study before, um, since COVID. Yeah. The level of stress uh, has gone up drastically. And it's, 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 it, it kind of makes sense because um, in order to overcome stress, or one of the methods to overcome stress is to socialize with family and friends and stuff like that. And when that stops, I guess the stress level kind of, you know, increases. So, um, yeah, it, you know, people are aware of it, but sometimes external situations overcome internal, situ internal situations mm. and we don't know how to manage it mm. and I think that's what stress is basically and because I guess there's ways of managing stress and different ways of coping with stress what go on yeah no on on that because that's what I was going to talk about I yeah. think because <clears throat> you just said about it being a stressful society which is true um but I think what we can sometimes what I definitely get caught up in caught up in is a tendency to when feeling stress st stressed is how I ask myself how can I just get out of this situation how can I stop feeling stressed right now and then what happens is you tend to go from stress to stress to stress to stress you just bounce between stressful situation a stressful situation mm. b whereas what I think we need to be more focused on or what I'm trying to focus on is the underlying causes of why we get stressed. And that is, mm. at least to me, in my view, the underlying causes of, the root cause of stress is how we react to events yeah. in our lives, right? And this is sort of part of a bigger thing, but it's due to a book I'm reading at the moment. This is exactly it though. This I think is the key, which I've not mastered, but I want, I want to get towards is that everything in life just happens to us. <clears throat> Things just happen to you they're neither good nor bad, they just happen, which is easy to say, but let's yeah. say that things just happen and then you can either, how you react to them on a mm -hmm. true level, not just on a surface level, how you truly react to them is gonna dictate how stressed they make you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and I say that like I'm some guru and I have 
so far away from getting this, but I definitely believe that that's where the key lies in kind of reducing stress is it's not about, and we will talk about learning to manage situation, stressful situations, yeah, yeah. that's important, but that's not gonna make you more stre uh, less stressed in life. That's just mm. gonna get you better at dealing with stressful situations. I deal with stressful situations at work all the time, but that doesn't make my general stress toler it probably makes my tolerance better but my general stress level i think it has no impact on if you see what i mean it's yeah, about yeah. there's there, it's about finding ways to reduce overall stress and that's what you talk about like causing chronic illnesses the uh, etc inflammation and lots of causes of cancer etc is related to the re release of that hormone and so but those people that have the that have those illnesses due to the stress is usually not because they've necessarily just gone through lots of stressful stuff it's because they have a naturally high stress level which is ha that's the thing i'm yeah. talking about tackling if that makes sense uh, uh, yeah would it be done to like life experiences and stuff well no and, and about how how they have reacted to a whole series of things mm -hmm. in their life you could have two people who have gone through very similar things external events yeah that are both really bad and one of them has developed incredibly high base level stress, constant re excretion of adrenaline and cortisone, et cetera. And for that reason, they have a whole host of illnesses and the other person might not have yeah. because they're better, equi better equipped at handling stress, if that so, makes sense. So basically, if you had two people that was going through stressful situations and you give them a mark out of 10 on how they deal with it, and A was always getting like seven out of 10 and B was getting like three out of 10. So throughout the journey, B that's always on three out of 10 is gonna find it hard to do with stress in life. Mm -hmm. While A, cause he's always trying to give his best when he's in a stress stressful situation, he's getting seven out of 10. So he's always going up, you know, it's going up, going up. Then people that don't find a way to deal with it will always be stuck in that three out of 10 of dealing with stress. While if you're that person that, you know, when you, you're facing a stressful situation, you deal with it like, you know, like, you deal with it head on, you don't shy away from it. Like, so again, when it comes to stress, every time we deal with it from a low point of view, it's, it's like you're adding more baggage to yourself. You need to give yourself a fighting chance and always trying to aim for like a five or seven out of 10. Yeah, well, it's, it's about how strong your mind is because mm. then you can deal with stress better. And, and I think what you're saying, Gabe, is bang on. And for me, it comes down to two things. One is like how strong your mind is and how ready it is to cope with stress. And later I'll chat about ways of coping with stress. And also, because yoga is targeting the nervous system, which is essentially what makes you stress. So it's how something triggers your nervous system is what makes you stress. But I think mentally it is about how strong, not your mindset is, but how strong you are mentally and how you can cope and react to stress. The other thing is, your life and like what's going on in your life. Like you could be less stressful person, but live a, in a much more stressful life and be more stressed than that person that isn't as stressed as you. And there's a really good example. I think it's in a Michael Singer book. <clears throat> I think it's Michael Singer where he gives the example, me and you are in a car, right? <laughs> You're sitting next to me. We're both in the back of the We're not in traffic, are we? We're not in, tra yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> all right, we're in traffic like Ollie was earlier. <laughs> We're in the back of the taxi. Let's say it's me and you, Manny. Okay, yeah. we're sitting on a seat together. We're kind of look like we're in the back of a taxi now or something. Yeah. All right. Really wide taxi. <laughs> really, really wide taxi. We're in a limo. We're too late. Uh, yeah, stretch hum a limo. Yeah. And we're both sitting there and a car comes past us and it's just a regular red BMW. So that's not that regular, but it's a red BMW. Mm. To me, I see it and it is nothing. To you, you see it. And it is your ex-girlfriend's car. Your ex-girlfriend had a car exactly like that. Or a family member that mm. passed away had a car that was exactly Association. like that. Association. So we've gone through, to Gabe's point, we've seen exactly the same thing. To me, it is nothing. It means nothing to me. I don't even register it. But to you, it triggers a whole host of memories that mm. make you stressful. Mm. So what I'm saying is it's your, your state and then your life as well. And if you take that on a level when you live in a stressful world where you're always being stressed out by conversations mm. at work or you're always on your phone or so it's, i think it's about environment outside externally and making sure that you treat that with respect but yeah. also your mental strength as well 
So, but if I learned to deal with the situation with my ex that had a red BMW, then perhaps. But, but th th that, that example is just to say, to you, mm. you will still register that. You mm. might not get stressed, and mm. it might it might be way worse. It depends mm. on how you are at the time. But it's more external environment can be yeah. completely different things to different people. For sure, Oli, you were gonna say. I was just gonna um, <coughs> mention that um, I've been learning about the mind recently, and um, there's a guy called Joe Dispenza who yeah. has oh, some yeah. really amazing, backed by science like knowledge on this kind of stuff. And Dr. Joe. Yeah, Dispenza. Dr. Joe. Get the doctor yeah, in doctor, there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mate Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he and he says that um, by the time you're 35, I don't know if you've heard this, Gabe, if you listen to his stuff, but by the time you're 35, 90 to 95 percent of your mind is an, uh, a program. So it's been programmed. Fuck, I've got six months left. Um, and that's unconscious like programming. So you will be making decisions such as getting stressed at red BMWs without realizing that you're getting stressed at red BMWs. And that means that if you want to do things like lose weight, for instance, if you've spent that you know time up until you've been 35, like just kind of trying to lose weight and then not managing it, um, that means you've got 5% of conscious decision, like thought processing to actually make that change. And the likelihood is, is you'll try and make it, but then you'll have that like default mechanism, which is the program um, that you will fall back on. So stress is also something that I believe is like a program that you fall back on because mm, like you said, it, it is a mindset, but it's also based on your lived experiences. Mm, totally. But your lived experiences are the past and your emotions are based on the past. So if you are living 95% of your life based on emotions and both based on like reactive like feelings you are living your life in the past therefore you will never enjoy your actual present so and obviously he has a bunch of ways of fixing this so don't worry if somebody's listening and thinking fuck mm -hmm. like <laughs> um like uh one of the things that obviously he preaches is meditation and that is something again we can speak to speak about when we maybe speak about yoga as well because i think there's a lot of similarities mm. um but yeah i found that really interesting when he spoke about that because it shows you that realistically you can choose to live with a victim mindset where you blame the way you are on something that happened 10, 15, 20 years ago, but that means you're living in the past because you're mm. allowing that to dictate your current like state of being. Um, and I think that stress is definitely one of those things that you can learn to understand. And I think, Gabe, you touched on this a little bit, is that you said that you wanna get rid of stress or something along those lines, right? You finish, then I'll clarify what I'm. What I'm but but I think that like a lot of the time is you you can never stop stress. You can never stop thinking, mm. just as much as you want to stop. You can't stop your heart beating. You can't stop your mind thinking. You sit. You think sixty to eighty thousand thoughts a day, and if they're all negative or based mm. from the past, you're gonna live a really unhappy life. Mm -hmm. um, so I think. And this is just my conclusion that I came to is that it's all about acceptance and learning to live with stress and learning to live with the things that have happened to you and just being like, you know what, this has happened to me, but it's made me the person I am today. Um, and I think that's a really beautiful way to live because then you can turn, like you said, the guy that's the seven out of 10, <coughs> like maybe the person that's dealing with it better has just accepted that he went through all of this, mm -hmm. but he's gonna use it to make his life better in the future, rather than saying, oh, this is the reason why I am the way I am. This is the reason why I'm stressed. This is stuck on free. Yeah. yeah. You but for sure, I, and I, I think on that point, there are some times when it is, when it's just generally how you're feeling. So let's say you're really tired, mm -hmm. you'll be more likely to get stressed out by something. Cause I, cause I do think that the acceptance thing and that kind of monk-like attitude is is a really good attitude, but I do think in real life sometimes it's hard to be in that mindset sometimes. You know yeah. I mean? Oh, sorry, Gabe, you were gonna. Gabe, yeah, I wanted to hear your point. What you were saying before? You forgot now. I've sort of got caught up in. I was absorbed in what yeah. Nick was saying there, but no, I was actually, to be fair, and you you're right about the acceptance thing. But I was gonna say, 
agree with what Ollie ended up mm. saying in that <clears throat> what I find with myself and stressful situations is I'm really stressed in the moment about a particular thing and then not all stressful situations, but some, a lot of them, a week later, I can look back on that mm. and be like, that was so much, that, in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. that was minor, mm. almost irrelevant sometimes. And so that's why those, that really, to me, screams a lesson that so much of stress is not the situation, but the story we tell ourselves about the situation, mm. the story we build around that situation, yeah. the thing itself, the event that has happened, with exceptions, obviously, but the event that happened often is not stressful in and of itself. Mm. Our reaction to it has made it stressful. That's f true for me, at so least. With it down to the, in the intensity of the situation sometimes, because you're in it, you can't take yourself away from it. So you just think, or everything's getting intensified. But yeah. like you said, after a week, when you look at it, like... You and know. I think it's a lot about the stories that we tell ourselves mm. around situations. And that's how you kind of get into like spiraling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's often off of lived experience, but also sometimes you tell your story, yourself a story about a situation that is not relate, not accurate to anything you've actually ever lived, but that's just where, or at least me, that's where I go to. For me, it's particularly around making mistakes, often mm. at work. If I make it, I hate making mistakes, I hate mm. it. And if I make a mistake and someone- see that in the way someone, <laughs> picks, someone picks it up, yeah. I get really stressed. Yeah. Mm. Even though, and I, so I'll tell myself the story, my boss has picked that up, they've, we're on a public platform with everyone else at work, they'll comment on it and everyone can see that I've, fucked up like mm. i'm that's so stupid why did i do that like they're not gonna rate me blah 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 and it's such a massive stressful situation and then a week later when literally no one has brought that up since then someone was just flagging a mistake no one's mm. brought it up probably no one noticed i go i look back and go like that was crazy i was mm. getting stressed about the situation because the story i was telling myself does that make sense yeah, yeah. and so I don't want to just like throw away all situations as, oh mate, you can like, it's just about how you deal with it. That's, it's not the case, but day to day stress, yeah, I yeah. actually, I do believe, excluding massive negative m events in life, excluding like death of death and breakups, et cetera, et cetera. Day to day stress, I think so much of it is related to how we interact with that event and the story we tell ourselves yeah. about that event. Uh, and I think that when you talk about the real in intense versions of stress. I don't think that's actually stress. I think most of the time it's mourning. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, you you're kind of like or grieving actually. Like, because you can grieve just like the loss of a job, for instance. Like, if that job was like your life for mm -hmm. 10, 20 years, like it does take a time to like grieve. And also when, and this may sound a little bit deep, but like when you change as a person, I've had experiences. I don't know if you guys have had this, but like. I've had experiences where I've not known who I am because I've changed, but I haven't recognized the person that I've become. Mm. And I've actually like spent time actually grieving the person that I used to be. And I know that sounds quite deep and stuff, but like I've had those moments where I've like literally like looked at myself and I thought, who the fuck am I? That's quite stressful. I like, look mm. in the mirror and thinking like, who am I like what's my purpose mm. what's like the point in in my life like what am I adding to the world and stuff like versus what I used to be doing um you said that a couple times now about not being yourself is the thing that stresses you out I think you said that to, to one of the quick fire questions yeah at the beginning is that like taking in the last few years as an like an example is that the thing that stresses you out most or like what what stresses you out most I think like yeah, so when I said not being myself, it's more like not living up to the potential that, or the person that I could be. So I, I think that a lot of- So what will be something that will trigger that, you to feel that? Um, it could be something really, really uh, trivial, like the amount of money I earn or the position I am in at life in terms of like, I'm, I'm 33 and I don't have kids or a wife yet, for instance, and there's, I think, and this moves on to like something that we probably should talk about, which is the societal pressures um, that we that we get, and also 
a lot of the time men specifically i think men they and and i, I think women obviously do this as well but like this is a very kind of masculine trait is that we put so much fucking pressure on ourselves mm. and that is so so stressful yeah. because like for me i definitely have all of these like milestones that i need to hit and i find that a lot of the time and like if i haven't done this by 25 i'm an absolute fucking loser yeah. if i haven't done this by 35 i'm falling behind like if i haven't bought my property by the and it's absolute bullshit like it my mum went to back to back to university in her 50s Mm. My dad um, built a um, a business from the ground up in his 40s. We had no money until I was like later on in my life. And my dad like built that, built his business up then. And I just thought, well, fuck, like if my parents can do it, like mm. what's wrong with, with why am I so stressed about being a certain age and not doing certain things? And I think everyone around this podcast yeah, probably has felt that, yeah. that at some point. And that's the thing that, that's what I mean, not, not being myself because or not being who I want to be is because I think I have all these parameters that I need to yeah. really hit. Um, Manny. Yeah, I'm, I'm Mr. Going, cool, Mr. Uh, Kill. I have not. What, what stresses you out? Um, Before I know. It can be a moment or it can be. Before I said I was being stuck in traffic, but I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Um, But I mean like what, what, is there being a specific moment, a specific traffic jam or a specific moment that you can think back on where you've been? Well, between one. me and yourself and Ollie and Gabe's, obviously like last year, mm. I was trading. All oh, right. Yes, and that whole situation really, really stressed me to F that. Mm. I, I don't want to go into much detail, but um, I was in the control kind of you know, I mean, finance, employment, relationship, are normally the sort of things to trigger, like, you know, your mm. stress level. And when you're going through like a financial experience as negative and your whole life depends on it, it becomes more than stress, actually. Mm. So I don't know, are we able to differentiate between trauma, stress and depression? which is the beginning, which is the end. Because mm. I couldn't tell you what I was going through during my moments of despair. I wasn't sure if it was stress or whether it was depression. I mean, I got depressed for a few days, but um, but the way I was raised, like I grew up in Africa, you see. So stress wasn't on the menu, nor was depression on the menu or anything else. So I'm sitting there and hearing you guys talk about it. So I'm wondering if stress is relative because in other parts of the world, people don't stress over the things we stress about. Most of our stress is driven by capitalism and commercialism. Society. Yes, yeah, society, external. So um, I understand once you're in the game, you're in the game, right? Because we're here, so it is what it is. But for most parts of the world, people don't deal with stress or see stress the way we see it. And that's the way I look at it. That's the way I overcome stress. I'd be like, wait on, I'm here. Um, there's people that you know probably didn't sleep well last night or had any meals to eat or anything like that, and I guarantee you they they're happy because I've seen that because I've travelled the world. You travel the world. I mean, you just come back from Marrakesh, Morocco. Mm. The life's different over there, right? People are different. Yeah, I think there's different stresses, but I don't think stress is talked about yeah. as much. But I think the stresses are just a little bit more real. I mean, for a kid yeah. growing up in the village and there's no rain and there's no yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like it's like real yeah. stress. It's like life stress, like Bec proper because survival. Bec survival stress. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the word. Yeah. But with survival stress, it's, it's it's different from societal stress living in in the in the in a in a Western world. Because you're like when you live in the Western world, like you got bills to pay, you got stuff to do. You're you're in contract with so many things that you can't find that space in your head to breathe easy. Like, but mm. when you live in a third world country, or should I say, Commonwealth? It's a little bit easier, although like you know, you might not have the rain to help you with your, you know, with your, um, with the farming and stuff like that. But I definitely think living in Europe or in, in the Western side of things really drive the stress level up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's the way. I, that's the way. I, that's the way I overcome stress by feeling like I'm grateful and I appreciate that 
I have a mindset or a creative mindset to be able to um, to be able to overcome my problems. So, um, and I know that stress is not permanent; it's short term, or, or how you want to look at it. Mm. And I'm always trying to picture myself overcome. I, I I picture a story in my head overcoming the stress. So that's how I deal with it. Mm. When you can't picture a solution, I guess it gets it gets worse for you, doesn't it? But if you can always picture a solution or improvisation, then you feel like I can overcome it. Mm. Well, yeah, because you'll have hope. And yeah. without hope, you just feel like you're doomed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 the, that's the honest truth. Like, you need to have hope when you're going through situ situations because that's all you have mm. and friends and family. So, yeah. I reckon you're right, though. Like, it would be... And I don't know because I haven't lived in Africa or... Mm. A Commonwealth country. You must have travelled. Yeah, I, I, I've country. seen a lot. I've like seen Thailand a, or somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of the world. Yeah. Um, and I've seen, like, I, I spent a long time in China, and there was a massive difference between the energy in the farming towns with the rolling hills of all the tea mm. farm and stuff, versus like central Shanghai or or Beijing or something where there's you know billions and billions of people. Cities um, are stressful. Yeah, they are. They are noisy. They're full of loads of people. Like, <coughs> and why is that? Why, cities. Why do you think that being around a bunch of people is is stressful? It, like, because when you think about, because it, it it does stress me out. Like going to like a really busy area. But when you think about it, it's just you're just like with a bunch of other people. And I, I'm sure there's other people out there that don't get stressed. Yeah, I wouldn't get stressed in that situation. Yeah. So, but it's past experience must have. So I suppose because I'm used to not mm. having that kind of environment. Mm. It's saying so that I went to Marrakesh years ago and I, I don't know, we traveled through some village or something and we got to some lady's house, like she barely like she had anything, but she still offered us food and stuff like that. And even though she had nothing, she still offered us food. And I, I will never forget that moment. I was like, you don't have nothing, but you still went on your way to bring up food for people that you still travel that coming through. Mm. So rule of thumb is people who have the least normally give the most. Yeah, mm. hundred percent. That's how it works. Mm. And also, another thing that I've learned recently is if you want kindness and love, you have to give kindness and love. Mm. So I think that in a lot of cultures, um, you find that people are really generous because everyone's generous. And it's such a one of it's such an easy one. Then in the city life, nobody's generous. Well, that's they? because everyone's in the rat race, like, mm. and that's probably why it's stressful because there's la there's a lack of kindness and love and like mm. awareness, and you never look someone in the eyes mm. and, and smile. Whereas, it, like in those places, like they're probably grateful to see someone that they've not seen before because absolutely they appreciate it more. Yeah, and, yeah, and and they 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 feel good. It's also like giving and being kind to others is. A really rewarding and fulfilling feeling. Mm. You know? how, how do we, how do we relate that to stress and you know like in terms of giving like so? I think when you do good, you release yeah. the right hormones that help to remove yeah. some of the stress. So you're banking, you're banking. banking. It's like it's one of the things you know. We'll, we'll go on shortly into sec about the things we can do to manage, yeah, or help us better deal with stress. But it's it's one of those things. It's like an ex, you know, gratitude, being kind is is another tool exercise you can do to help help with that and I think because <clears throat> when thinking about stress I think there are a society I think money is a massive stress for a lot of people lots of people your point and and I remember when we did the first no man's an island or it was something we did with the ogies money was the thing that came up most in terms mm. of stressing people out um and it's interesting is, is in stages of life how it's different too because to me I'll answer the quick fire question now that I didn't say I'd answer. The kind of the most stressed I think I've been in the last few years is is Marley crying at 2 a.m. when I haven't slept well for a week because she's had a cold or near the beginning where kids don't sleep well. And there's like a level of stress with that, which is- a, Who's Marley by the way? Huh? Who's Marley? My daughter, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> Could have been anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, so I, I, I think, there are there are things in life that we just you know will stress us out and especially at the beginning of having a kid yeah. honestly it is it's a new challenge no one can prepare you for it i've never ever experienced anything like it it is every day for the first kind of month is just 
it, you don't know what you're going to get, but you're living on such few hours sleep. It's that thing of, of yeah, lack of sleep. And when you don't have sleep, you don't have energy, your mind isn't clear. And a crying baby at 4 a.m. when you're tired is is stressful situations. So kind of, to me, <laughs> that's what I think of when I, I think of stress. But I think let's move into how we cope, manage with stress, because I think we're all going to have interesting and different answers. And I think why don't we all give a couple things that we do or a couple things that we think help most with stress. Who wants to go first? Well, when you were speaking, I thought about how you're saying you were stressed because you didn't have your sleep or, or whatever. Mm. Um, and that made me think the first thing you have to do to get rid of stress <laughs> is to probably make sure that your foundations of survival were like mm. looked after. So you're eating, sleeping well, you're sleeping well. Um, and and that's probably the two main things that reduce stress. So, but you know, like you get like on yeah. Instagram and social media, people are like, if you want to make it in life, you want to be like a millionaire, you go sleep four hours, five hours. Oh, I'm rubbish. like, I'm like, that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it literally is. It's been scientifically proven that it's literally it's impossible to work at like uh, oh, even on. half like like cognitive state yeah. off of four or five hours. So people that say they're on four or five hours. Yeah, maybe you are. Maybe you. you're running on adrenaline yeah, for a day yeah. or two. But for you now, good luck to you. Yeah. In the long term, it's going to have you know it's, consequences. Yeah, it's going to mess you up. So foundational yeah. things. Mm. It's so so you eat. Make sure you're eating enough, and make sure you're sleeping enough. Like seven, eight hours. Mm. I'd, I'd say first, they're the first things you need to look at. Really. I yeah, I'm trying to think what the best, the ways I deal with stress. So they're not necessarily the best ways, the, but, but the way I deal with it. <clears throat> Number one, to use a very silly but enjoyable catchphrase, motion is lotion, they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, for movement, for me. I ha I notice for me that stress, it feels like a blockage. It feels like something is stuck when mm. I'm stressed. And often my shoulders go up, my mm. neck goes down. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm tight, I feel tight. Body tenses. It's, yeah. it, te it literally, te if you actually recognize it, it's always in the shoulders, yeah. but most classically in the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. So that's the first thing. So movement, gym, like f training weights is good, but general heart raising activities, mm. like going for a run, going for a walk. But for me, it's like hard physical exercise is, is, is the number one. Yeah, yeah, I've just got to say it now because mm. motion and lotion and hard physical. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest, sex <laughs> is probably one of the most stress relieving things you can yeah? do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just couldn't resist. Absolutely. You started with motion as lotion, then <laughs> so, so no, I didn't hard that physical one. It's exercise. Sex is what? What was the last one? What did you say? Uh -huh. What did you say just now? I don't know. Motion is lotion, hard physical exercise oh. is what he said. But oh, okay. I think, I, no, oh no, I was saying sex is one of the most stress relieving tools i hate to word, word tool for it but do you know what i mean like yeah it literally can completely relax you so for all the geezers that are really stressed out there show your missus <laughs> this, this video <laughs> yeah 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 and uh please yeah. <laughs> look but, no, but I, it, but it but is i actually think that's wrong to use sex as a release i don't think it's, it's not about, it's not about using, using it, it really yeah just that it might be well it is what it is yeah, yeah. it is what it is but uh, what yeah when you have sex, you release, don't you? So yeah. it's why sometimes if you get in an argument with your partner, the best thing you can do is have sex because then you both feel good after. You well, you you know why that is? It's because the the hormone. Oxytocin. Yeah, but, <laughs> but oxytocin it kills cortisone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so like the it, oxytocin is actually an antidote to cortisone. So actually, so on a scientific level, when we're talking about the cortisone actually having a negative impact on your body, the oxytocin actually pushes that away and fills your body with like the so love hormone rather than It literally stress. blocks any feeling of like negativity and it wipes your mind of what you're- But that's on, a, that's on a mental, I'm talking on like a physical on stage. On a physical level, body. great, yeah. But yeah, on a mental stage, yeah. Then on a can. mental state, don't use sex to cure your fucking relationship problems. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, not, you I'm, never I'm definitely <laughs> not vouching for that. Yeah. But I mean, sex is one of the most powerful things that we have in this, on this planet, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And do not use and abuse it. I don't. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> don't feel stressed. Then you so know. what about for the geezers that don't have girlfriends? What should they do then? Bash the bishop. You know. 
coconut oil or whatever you want to use. Um, That's again, a different again, conversation. Again, no. Yeah. I know, okay, again okay. no, please don't do that because it's like when you do that and it's on your own, there's again, there's a bunch of studies that have been done that like when you release like all that tension and you have no one with you to share it with, it actually creates this like your dopamine levels go skyrocket and then they go from low baseline so you actually become like in a lower mood but that's pornography yes yeah yeah 100 percent. which yeah, is yeah, yeah. i mean most blokes watch it yeah yeah, yeah. when they're bashing basically the we're saying <laughs> don't <laughs> watch <laughs> porn and and relieve yourself and you might relieve stress and not have the dopamine well, well also like if you don't watch porn and don't do that you are probably more likely to have that drive to actually go and meet yeah. a woman because you're like so pent up with testosterone you're like right i need to find somebody yeah like you know whereas if you keep on watching porn it's like it just becomes a habit yeah so in more yeah, um, yeah, yeah moving on in, in less in less sordid yeah. gave gave way. what's your, your what's the number two one <laughs> <laughs> is it, got, is it some sort lotion? of in and out motion <laughs> or, yeah no number two i would say for me <laughs> is um writing stuff down Mm. And I'm, mm. I'm almost hesitant to say that because I think people throw a lot of weight into journaling and stuff and that doesn't work for a lot of people. So I'm not talking about necessarily But watch journaling. this space at Yogi's, just a little bit on that in a month. Journals are sick. <laughs> but, but I mean that I have found it really recently when I was super stressed, mm. I just, I didn't know, I often find it quite difficult to articulate it. I find stress mm. for me is quite an internal feeling. And again, going back to that feeling of, tightness and stuckness and I feel quite trapped in my stress sometimes and I just feel like I can't explain it to someone mm. or that's what I have felt so I write it down and that and it didn't cure it I didn't write stuff down and go oh my god it's gone but it definitely helped a bit of the I just like I didn't then read it or anything but just to be I think I even wrote like fuck <laughs> that's it in I like that. I actually like that just to be like I don't know it, I so I, I found write it, writing it down so exercise and Writing stuff down, I think, helps me. I write down mm. stuff as well, but I always read it back and realize how ridiculous I've been. Yeah, again. Mm. So, and that yeah. goes back to my point of a week later, when you look back, yeah. it would be a good learning to be like, I, could, I haven't read it back, but I could read that and be like, now I know that it's such a non-event and a non-issue, mm. the thing that I was stressed about. I could read that and be like, it would be a good lesson. To so the, so the reason why, why journaling is, is really, really useful is because it actually um, grounds you and makes you present within like, the moment that you're in because the method of writing pen on paper actually like brings you into that because you're focusing on that movement and then once you've wrote down whatever you're feeling because obviously it's an emotion or whatever that you're feeling like and you have to write it down you read it back most of the time you read it back in a different way and not in the same emotion like because you read in a certain way like i don't know if you guys have like a a voice in your head when you read like it probably doesn't sound stressed or mm. upset or whatever but if you read back what you wrote in your journal, a lot of the time, it's like, oh, I was really upset about that's ridiculous. Why are you worried about that, mate? Like, this, this mm. is silly. So that's 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 how I do it anyway. That's how I find the help. Mm. Just piggybacking off of your writing stuff down, which I think is a really good advice. I think more men should write their thoughts down, and more men should journal because <laughs> it's, uh, you know. It's not a Watch girly space. thing to do, yeah. No, for yeah. sure. And, and just sorry, la last That's thing right. I would say is about that is, to, if we're talking in the moment yeah. exercises that will help, uh, the other thing I do find is um, breathing. Mm. I find box breath really helpful, which is breathing in for four, holding for four, breathing out for four, and holding for four. And I, four seconds that is. Mm. And I think of, I draw a box in my head. Mm. And I find if I do that for like 10 rounds, in the moment, that doesn't cure everything long term, but in the moment, that really, really helps me to just, again, because it's about bringing yourself into yourself. Because we go back to that thing of stress being, or stories that we're telling ourselves, so we're going into the future or into the past or any which way, but when we actually come into where we are right now, like here, mm. we often can realize that it's well, not. Bre breath work, yeah. and this will, I'll maybe talk a bit about yoga and breath work, but breath work is, is the best tool we have to influence our nervous system mm. like scientifically it is the best tool that we have apart from meds probably but that's a whole nother thing so so i think breath work and yoga is about movement through breath and and those two practices i'm going to group them together because i think yoga and breath work essentially try and do the same thing and that is try and bring that's trying to influence the nervous system 
And a lot of the part, and some of the stuff is in the moment, especially when it comes to breath work, because you can just control your nervous system. But also some of the other stuff that you can do when you build it up over time in a practice of yoga and breath work, is you're influencing the nervous system. And this is more so in yoga, that when you come to certain situations on the mat, and it's actually then translate, and this is not in all yoga, but in most yoga or good yoga, is like the stressful situations you encounter on the mat and how you teach your body and nervous system to react to that in that moment, then essentially ends up being how you react to things off the mat as well. And there's there's a way that the breath works that we can influence our nervous system. And I think it is a tool, and we've talked about this before, a tool that I think is underutilized in this society. Because to your point, it can help in the moment, but also it literally is the thing that we can do. And I think in this way, it is different, different to physical act activity and exercise because you breathe in it, but the, the emphasis isn't on the breath as much as, I mean, you breathe to help do certain things, but with yoga and breath work, it is literally all about influencing the nervous system, the synthetic and the parasynthetic nervous system to help you be less stressed in life. And in terms of life experience, and actually seeing this really having a big effect on me is about eight years ago, nine years ago, I was a way more stressed person, like way more stressed. And having practiced for a number of years, and I, I haven't practiced that much in the last two years since having a kid, but the difference in how I react to stressful situations, and it's still carried through to me now, eight years ago compared to post doing yoga is an absolute massive difference. So we're shortly running out of time now. Um, yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah. on that note, I'm gonna tell you how I deal with my sh stresses, like whatever. So um, the way I deal with stress is first of all, is to understand the world we live in, un understand the dynamics and understand the journey that you're on and what's ahead, your obstacles and whatever you, your challenge is. For, for once you understand that you live in a world full of challenges, then like you said, you know, you, you have to expect these things to happen sometimes. And lastly, in terms of physical exercise, do you remember the FMD stuff, free movement dancing? Mm -hmm. So if I if I find myself stressful, I normally put my headphones on and listen to some music without no, I don't know. Music and dance is actually amazing. Yeah, so, so when I listen to music, I just kind of let, let myself go freely. If I could let myself go freely, I'm saying to myself, I could let my stress go freely. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I, I encourage for anyone going through a stressful time, just put on your headphones on and find a light kind of music, you know, just probably mm. some acoustic, whatever. And if you allow yourself to move freely without judgment, without overthinking it, you're overcoming your stress in a way. So that's how I deal with stress, mm. you know, like headphones on, some music and Love that. free movement dancing, something we were trying to promote earlier with your geese, but didn't pick up momentum. But I see on Instagram that people doing a lot of dancing. I mean, and dance and music is yeah. essential. Mm. And and on that note and stress, we're we're being told that we need to leave, so we better not stress someone else out here. <laughs> oh, that's um, <laughs> yeah. But thanks for listening. Uh, that point about the journal, we'll we'll announce that next month. But we'll work on something to do with the journal. It might even be a journal itself. But we'll have more on that next month. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening or watching uh, us talk about stress. Does everyone feel more stressed, less stressed? Always less stress. Always less, less stress. stress. Good. Uh, is stress of fun. <laughs> Um, yeah so uh yeah please don't forget to like subscribe whatever you need to do to help boost this podcast and next month i think we've got a topic already oh we have uh yeah yeah we've got a topic already um that yeah we'll share obviously next month but for now thanks everyone thanks ollie thanks manny thanks gabes everyone out there take it geezy